Warcraft 1. The Grandpappy. The Godfather. The plot of the movie, which wasn't actually half bad. Rumor is this was meant to be a Warhammer Fantasy RTS. Blizzard took their chili balls and made their own masterpiece. Inspired by the Dune RTS games, they birthed a beautiful, flawed, but wonderful piece of gaming history. This is the very first game I ever played. It morphed my baby brain into loving strategy games, fantasy, medieval history, and just gaming as a whole. Even as a three-year-old, on my stool, watching my dad play, I was like, yeah, this is going to be my thing. Before we get started, I have to address the absolute insanity that I've witnessed. Over the weekend, I went to my cousin's wedding. Having a family of Newfoundlanders is amazing. If you don't know, being Canadian is fine, but being a Newfoundlander is just wonderful. They are easily some of the most wholesome, wonderful, kind, and creative, loving people. So the weekend was full of drink, singing, and dancing. Upon returning, my channel absolutely exploded. From 2,000 views on my human deathless run to over 36,000 at the time of recording this. From 250 some odd subs to over 1,200. That is crazy. I am absolutely floored and absolutely humbled by all the nice comments and the community that is building. I have found other like-minded channels, fellow Warcraft fans, and it's really wonderful to see. So thanks. Being an adult is bullshit. We all know that. So times like this really make it worthwhile. So it has been one of the best weekends of recent memory. Thanks to you and some wonderful family. I have been made a YouTube partner now and I've set up monetization stuff. I hope it doesn't put a bad taste in the mouth or seem too intrusive, but I try to be minimal. Ads only at the beginning and end of videos and they all must be skippable. I wasn't expecting to make money off this, but this is all wild and new to me. So thanks again for everything. This might be able to make my departure from the military to civilian life a little bit easier. Thanks for helping my dreams of being an entertainer. So on to the main course. Warcraft 1 is to put simply old but it has such a hold on my heart that my nostalgia brain just moistens every time I see it. Graphics and sprites are so charming, the music slaps and the aesthetic is just gorgeous. But it is hard, mostly due to the mechanics and interface. You fight more with the game itself than the AI. Now that's not saying the AI is easy, it is far from it. But four man control groups, no right click is just bonkers to think about. Luckily. Some beautiful nerd somewhere has created a mouse plugin that allows right click. Essentially, it is a command check that checks A, being an attack order, or heal for clerics, or harvest for workers, anytime you select anything. This is a tad buggy, but it makes the game infinitely more playable. The game is very imbalanced. Like Warcraft 2, both races are complete mirrors of each other, save for some strange minor differences. Human archers have one more range, but one less damage than spearmen. And that's it. Apart from spellcaster units having different spells, that is the only difference in this game, which is very bizarre. If you're going to do asymmetry, you could have done human footmen's have one more armor, but orc grunts have five more health, or something like that. Also, catapults are bullshit machines, and of course we have to bring up greater summoning. Both races' spellcasters can be upgraded with greater summoning for 3,000 gold or free in the last mission, and it summons an uber unit demon or water element and they are just fucking cracked for example an orc raider a high tier melee unit a 17 damage when fully upgraded with 90 hp a demon does 69 nice with 300 health and is free save for buying the warlock like what the hell is this but in the end i love this game i play it often it is the goat so with the success of my warcraft 2 run let's see can you beat Warcraft 1, Orcs and Humans, Deathless. Same rules as Warcraft 2. Every mission with no units lost. Score screen doesn't have a death tab, so enemy kills will justify. Crux here, summons die when their timer expires. Scorpions, spiders, water elementals, and demons, which means unless I can summon one and finish the mission before it expires, I cannot use the broken units. Which makes things wee harder. So let's get to the game. Humanity. Humans are really cool in this game. While both races are entirely orcs or humans, no elves, dwarves, or gobos here, it is really neat to see what the humans use instead of the Warcraft 2 races. 
human crossbows instead of elven archers, human clerics instead of elf priests, and stuff like that. It makes you wonder what even the dwarf equivalent of that would be. What would a dwarf ranged unit? What would a dwarf footman equivalent be? What would a dwarf cleric equivalent be? The humans are super metal in this game. Awesome mustaches and just armored smashing bastards. Humans are way easier than the orcs. Their archer range and healing alone makes them way better in my opinion. Kind of like the ogre and their bloodlust in Craft 2. Level 1. Regent. Standard tutorial mission. Build six farms and a barracks. You start with footmen and peasant units. No introduction necessary for Damn, these sprites are great. It's kind of cool to see where Warcraft 1 evolved into Warcraft 2. Like the peasants went from these big, tough armed guys with tank tops and a beautiful mane of hair to the goofy, sad, yes, me lord peasants that they used from there on out. Warcraft 1 uses the road mechanic, meaning all buildings must be built adjacent to a road tile. Roads are 50 bucks a pop. This makes matches purely one base on one base, with no expansions. With this madness that is the gold mine placements, you're going to be finding yourself, where the fuck is the gold mine? All the time. No expansion or proxies here, boyos. Level 2, Grand Hamlet. Every mission in this game besides one is a kill everything mission. With this level, you can turtle and let your enemies come to you, or you can man up and hit them where they live. You get archers here. Bread and butter, these guys are fucked and will probably be the most important unit for their cost and access to upgrades. They shoot fast, hit hard, and their AI doesn't break often. And these guys are good until we get the boom boom boys. Level 3, Kairos. Our first base on base level. The enemy has two attack routes and the sneaky bastards catch me off guard right away. I try to establish a surround and choke them out, but it still surprised me. Humans get the cleric here, which is a must have for the rest of this run. They heal hard and from far away. Keep them out of combat though, their basic attack actually costs mana in this game. But does a surprising amount of damage. Build up a wall of archers and slowly move in. Once you pass a certain threshold, the enemy goes apeshit and presses the town bell button and will swarm your location. This can be good or bad. Draws them into your firing line but can also drag your units out of position and isolate them from easy kills. Once you get catapults, this tactic is going to be necessary. This is a rescue mission, that you also need to kill everything. Strangely, the enemy has attack orders on this map too. It means eventually, all enemies will come to you. We are supposed to head into these ogre-infested caves and rescue Lothar, a band of merry men who went missing here. Crawl your way through and deal with these lame, one-headed ogres who wear pants and use clubs. Not my ogres. I like my ogres ass out and punchy. I have to be careful not to touch the dudes napping with blankets. They immediately turn into units with one HP, so one tickle and they're dead. Lothar is here. He has a custom model and portrait and even has different stats. Interestingly enough, his portrait has blood coming out of his mouth because he's supposed to be quote unquote wounded. And in the manual, wounded have their own icons and models, but they don't seem to have them in the actual game. This is the only controllable hero unit in the human campaign and is not seen until the mission where he dies in Warcraft 2. Somebody worked hard on making a custom model and portrait for both games only to have them used literally once each. I appreciate you, bro, wherever you are. 5. Forest of Elwyn. Out of the caves and into the fire. We are assigned a knight escort and need to destroy an orc base on the other side of this forest. This mission is a little easy. There is a one tile choke to your base, so get over there and wall up with meat. You get knights here. These guys are so fucking cool. Sheriff's mustaches, flails on horseback. Oh man, this sprite is sick. Not sure how the useful a flail will be on horseback. Might be why War 2 they have warhammers and War 3 they have lances. Either way, the challenge to these early missions is teching up the clerics ASAP before the enemy attack waves whittle you down. The waves aren't that scary, but they are frequent. The fucking gold mine is all the way up here in the middle of the stands watching his favorite reruns of Full House while the second gold mine is on the other side of these trees, so get chopping. Once you've built up enough force, lure the enemies into your archer lines and clean up the rest of the base. Level 6, Nolsha Abbey. Quick start, we begin with a town and a platoon of troopers to the west, but the town is immediately under attack. We need to rush and save what we can. I could easily have saved this blacksmith, 
which died, so I decided to give her another crack. I saved the blacksmith this time and begin gathering some resources. This is the mirror match of this campaign, which is really cool. Seeing humans in the color red always was cool to me. Fortunately, you cannot ever play as them. Even if you play multiplayer and you are player two, no matter what, you will always see yourself as blue and the enemy will appear in red. The orcs get a mirror match too, but we will get to that later. This level is an introduction to probably the bane of my existence in this entire game. Catapults. These death wagons are so broken. They have an entire screen's length of range, nine tile splash, and essentially one shot every unit in the game with maybe a fully upgraded knight and greater summon, shrugging off maybe one shot. They reload super fast, have a huge health pool, and are not even that expensive. It's madness this unit got past testing. At least in Warcraft 2, they toned them down hard, but they are still a potent unit in that game too. Once you retain control of your town, build some peasants and get some clerics with heals on the go and watch the back entrance of your units. Once you get death wagons up, slowly crawl your way to the enemy board. Once you're in a good position, you can cat and mouse the enemy guards. Every enemy base has pre-positioned sentries and will immediately stand to and panic when a certain threshold is crossed. Usually it's attacking a peasant in the area or moving too close to a certain structure. Once the enemy loses its shit, they will beeline all available guards to your trespassers, which you can exploit and lure towards your artillery battery. This game is a low-key World War I simulator. Slay the red traders and claim your win. Level 7, Sunny Glade. This is where I dare to be different. This mission starts you with a sizable army, but no workers and not enough money to buy any. Apparently, the civilians were kidnapped by orcs and are stashed in a prison somewhere in between your base and the enemies. Now, this is a pretty standard task, but there was a certain addition of this game that when you rescued the peasants, the entire enemy base panic buttoned and marauded towards your town. I believe the good old games.com version is fine. But this is not what I decided to do, however. I casually have been able to beat this mission without rescuing the peasants at all, so I wondered if I could pull it off deathless. They do decide to give me an Oppenheimer truck, so I head down the back way of the enemy base and try my luck. Once I get below this lake, it looks like there's a fairly tight choke where I can funnel these fools into my flaming death, so I get into position and start cat and mousing the enemy. What I don't realize is when I crossed the threshold, the enemy didn't butt rush my freedom cart, but instead rampaged towards my pathetic starting town. With all of their troops, all of their troops, this enemy base is basically inert at this point, and the town gets burnt to the ground, so I need to prepare, and I don't have a lot of time. I rock up next to this lake area, and with a few resets, some luck, and a clutch shot, I manage to nuke the entire enemy force with zero casualties. I ride this high and finish off the rest of the base and go rescue the peasants. They must have been like, what the hell took you so long? Let's get to work. Only to end the mission. Level 8, Medivh Tower. The second dungeon crawler mission level, and it's a huge one lore-wise. This is the moment in the movie, in the flashback in Warcraft 3, where Medivh is slain by Lothar, whose model is Sir not appearing in this level. Now, this is a tricky level. Lots of tough enemies, demons, and fire elements, with a boss at the end. What people don't realize is that the fire elementals actually have boobs, just like the water element. So if you want a really steamy water and fire knight, you can hire these two babes. Medivh himself is also a tough, fast-firing, demon-spawning dick. It can be a tough mission, unless you are a brilliant cheese lover, such as myself. This has got to be the first exploit in gaming that I ever discovered. Before the internet, before strategy guides, before I got my first boner from that scene in Cruel Intentions. This is a windy, long tunnel level, but the map maker didn't plan out the geography well. Medivh is actually within earshot of your starting force, and they give you far sight on your clerics in this level. Now, while you cannot shoot in the dark, you can farsight Medivh's bedroom and spy on him wanking. Go away, Baton! He is not too happy about this and immediately engages, but if you're positioning your archers well, you can kill him before even entering the front door. Unfortunately, this is not the trigger to end the level. You still need to kill every other enemy, but you at least won't have to worry about summon demons and engaging him on his terms. So slowly crawl through, maintaining your heels until you get to the main hall. These dungeon levels are cool. They have a lot of visual storytelling. There are furniture, rugs, and torn up bodies, torture devices, and weird ritualistic symbols. Remember, this is before the light was the religion. Even in the manual, God is mentioned, so this army is Christian. 
There's a pentagram on the ground to prove that the orcs are from hell. The single most powerful unit in the entire game and can usually one-shot any unit besides the biggest of boys. Lure them in, spam heals, and pray to Jesus. This is also an example of how dumb I was as a kid. Since you fight spiders who fight for the orcs, I legit asked my mom in real life if real life spiders were orcs. This is why I'm single. Level 9, the Black Morass. This is usually the final mission of standard combat before the game turns into a water park. Fortunately, we cannot make water boots. This is where the enemy kicks things up a notch. By one, bringing in warlocks and awful spells, and two, multiple bases. I should also bring up, if I haven't already, the ludicrous gold mine plates in this game. Even in multiplayer, they are randomized, so it usually boils down to whoever has the better mine wins. I call these the where the fuck is the gold mine missions. A lot of these missions have insanely long gold travel tunnels, sometimes even placed behind trees or buildings. This level, in particular, Jesus, your guys are getting their cardio. Or campaign, however, must have some of the worst gold mine placements I've ever seen. But we'll get to that. The new pen in the ass spells are Poison Cloud, randomly moving damage everything underneath, and Unholy Armor halves the health of whatever it's casted on and makes them invulnerable for an unknown amount of time. This always seems like the enemy unholy armor lasts hours, but mine lasts 10 seconds. Other than that, shit is still pretty standard. Build archers and artillery and form up on the bridge. He who controls the bridges controls the war. I like to go for the south base first. It seems a little less fortified. You also get to build walls here, but they are expensive, slow to build, and have an unclear build zone. Usually a waste of time. For now, once the south base falls, head north and repeat. Blow up the bases until it's time to go hunting. This is a mechanic of many old RTS games. Absolutely everything hostile on the map. Most games today just means destroy every building, but not this game. This game, there's usually a little peon or a worker or a building hidden in the dark. Funny enough, it was a building I missed, and it is down back at the other place. Level 10, Temple of the Dam. This looks like it should be a tough mission. Final, no build, but you get a crazy amount of troops, spellcasters and heaters, and four wind contraptions. There is actually not a whole lot of tough enemies in this level, it's mostly necrolites and warlocks. It is a cool looking base though, littered with temples of the dam. The threshold alarm in this map is the summons. Once you get to a certain stage in this level, every enemy warlock summons spiders all at once and throw them in your direction. Luckily, spiders are trash, so you can easily dispatch them. Once the arachnophobia is gone, just blow up the rest of the base. 11. Rockhard and Stonehard. I think you can tell the Blizzard devs were rock and rollers. Or were at least playing Deep Rock Galactic back in the 90s. Rockhard and Stonehard is a standard fight two bases mission. It's supposed to be a piece of cake with water elementals, which you can purchase in this level, but for me, it means a good amount of pain and grind. This level, though, the MVP is the wall. I know, nobody ever uses the scenes, and I later discovered a better kind of wall, but the enemy likes to come down this narrow tree line, and I can actually build a wall and put some catapults and archers behind to fire away. This town is rough, too. You are completely in the open. Most of the other levels have at least somewhere to form up and narrow the field of fire, but this is just one wide open map. Wood is a bit of a pain in the ass in this map, this is where we should discuss Peasant AI. Peasants cannot fight in this game, unlike all the rest of the series. Worse yet is that when they get tapped by anything, they take control away from you and panic run in a random direction. This makes corralling them a massive pain. Trying to save them makes it even harder, because they actively seem to retreat in worse conditions, and the enemy will focus them down until they're dying breaths. Good thing human archers are so OP. Just make a firing squad with Siege in the back and slowly move forward. I tried using Conjurer's Firestorm, which is another potent ass spell with a huge AoE, so I try to use that to aggro the defender. Both enemy bases are quite close to each other, and you'll need to be careful of sneaky boys attacking your base while the army is gone. Crawl and blast. Lure and blast. Eventually, the enemy bases will be empty and you can roll on in. Level 12, Black Rock Spire. Grand finale of the human campaign. 
destroy the rocky black fortress and its three bases, sending the orcs packing. This is a deceptive mission. At first glance, it's a nightmare, but it's actually a lot more reasonable than the orc final mission. There is only one attack route the enemy takes into your base, and it is not far from your town. You can meet wall this gap and prepare for the big red daddies. Demons are your biggest threat here. They will come with fairly high frequency too. You can smush enough archers and catapults, but sometimes one of these pricks sneaks past your fire and guts you. Careful not to cut too much trees on the left side of the map as you could open up a sneak route to your base. I farsight the enemy positions looking for bangfuck catapults and make my move eventually. Not much else to say here to be honest. Slowly move your meat squad up, luring enemies and avoiding catapults. Here is how overpowered catapults are. They can still kill you in god mode. Think about that. God mode means you are immortal, cannot be killed, except by catapults. I firestorm this base for shits and to aggro and keep wasting them. Once the outer two bases are gone, get ready for the big one. Blackrock Spire is so big you actually have to use farsight to just to see the whole thing. It's a pretty big rock with a teeny tiny little door. This last bastion has a lot of enemies, so peel them out and murder them. Bomb the spire and watch the fireworks and the credits roll. Nothing crazy here, just a long grindy level. The king looks like a badass too. Blizzard really liked their mustaches back then. Footmen, knights, archers, and the king all have wicked stashes. So yes, you can beat Warcraft 1 humans deathless. But can you beat the orcs? The Orcish Horde. My my, what horrors lay ahead. First off, orcs are badasses. I love the sprites for them in both games, but the green and mean orcs were always my favorite. I mean, look at the Necrolite. Look how awesome he is. You definitely want him to entertain for your kid's birthday party. If I could expand the Warcraft 1 engine with an all-elf or dwarf or troll faction, that would be cool. Warcraft 4, if it ever happens, it won't. I'd love like Warhammer Fantasy levels of faction diversity. Anyways, to the orcs. Their campaign is substantially harder than the humans due to three things. Lack of heals, invisibility, and the minus one range on ranged units. Humans in the end game get invisibility and spam it so much and are fucking on point. They will camp outside of your walls until you open the door and they will get in and raid your gold line. There is no detection in this game. I discovered a wild strategy while experimenting with the orcs and blew my own mind. Not sure if the strat is known, but I'm happy with my silly brain and will utilize this strategy to beat some levels later. Not being able to heal is shit too, so I often have to take units that are critical and put them back to bed in the back of my face. It makes the no-build missions tricky too, and again, no summons, so no skelly boys, no spiders, no demons. <laughs> Level 1, Swamps of Sorrow. Tutorial level, exactly the same as the human version. First six or so missions are exact mirrors, so we will get through this quick. Build six farms in the barracks. The Borderlands, technically a survival map, but unless you want to wait for six hours, get a squad of spearmen and go hunting. Kind of fitting, like tribal hunters. Three, Grand Hamlet, base on base. Just guard the two entrances to your base, mass spearmen and crawl in while luring the enemy. Human AI fucking spams heal so much too. It seems like they get way more value out of their mana than you do. Later on, they will have like three to six clerics just power healing their units, causing havoc. Four, the Dead Mines. Dungeon Crawler. Except we aren't rescuing a hero. We are murdering one. Griselda, a character I don't think is ever mentioned again, ever. Which I find fascinating. Being Blackhand the Destroyer's daughter. His sons, Rend and Main, get their due diligence, but Griselda doesn't even get a cameo. Anyways, she ran away and is fucking an ogre named Turok. Gross. And I wonder if this was a reference to Turok the Dinosaur Hunter. With no heals, these levels will be tricky and boring. Formation, lure, formation, lure. The scariest part is the slimes. They have huge health pools and absurd armor, and there are a lot of them. But luckily, they do really low pathetic damage, so just form up and hold the line. Once you get to the main hall, kill all the ogres and finish off poor, ugly duckling Griselda. This is kind of hardcore. An unarmed princess who is just out for love, butchered in cold blood by her father's vanguard. 
5. The Red Ridge Mountains Like the human mirror mission, we are immediately under attack and need to dispatch our squad to save the town as best we can. I just barely miss saving the blacksmith, but not to worry, crops can be sown, homes are rebuilt. This level really accentuates the flaw between the two asymmetrical units in this game, human archer and spearman. That one extra range is infinitely better than the spearman with one more damage. It is easy enough to outrange my meat walls and it aggros nearby victims, which causes the formation to break. Usually not your spearman either. Typically your melee frontline will leave and your spearman will watch like idiots. It really makes pitched battles way harder for spearmen because the, by the time they get into range of the humans, the humans have already fired off two, maybe three more shots. I would go for range over damage any day of the week here. I cross the bridge of death and who are some of the end? They have a lot of archers here. I get a good engagement and pull back to beat some grunts. And this looks like a good place to save. So let's go get my grunts and why? Is there a green body on the floor? Fuck me. There was a patrol guarding the left side of the bridge I never realized existed, and when I pulled my grunts back, they got whacked. And I just saved the only file. Well, it's time to go again. Hey, I saved the blacksmith this time. Anyways, redo the same strat, and we are back to this position. Once you are confident the archers are dead, Get those javelins in there and start blasting. I always thought spearmen sprites looked like ninja turtles. Their portrait has helmets, but their sprite doesn't. I always found those little details fascinating. 6. Sunny Glade Back to the verdant green lands of Sunny Glade. This is the one and only mission with a different objective other than kill everything or rescue character. Only to need to still kill everything, besides maybe the Lothar cave mission. This mission tasks us with killing everything, except one building, a human tower. We need more magics with a K, so we need to destroy the entire base besides one. We blow up the tower, we lose. So this is another he who controls the bridges controls the war. Humans control it to start. We have a secret weapon. Catapults. Finally. Unfortunately, this is a where the fuck is the gold mine mission, and it is stupid far scout out my side of the bridge because the humans like to sneak around the far left here. The enemy also starts to show their trump card. Magic. Humans absolutely spam magic, heals, summons, and the next mission marks the beginning of the worst. The challenging parts of the latter half of the campaign is getting up and running. The enemy rushes fast with cheeky units and the range of the human archers and advantage rears its ugly head yet again. Once we survive the first stage, we get catapults up and we can blow up those pesky archers. However, catapults can be a liability. Secure this bridge and start the pain train, whirring down, bam, bam. Destroy the rest of the town, but be careful not to destroy the tower. Spare it and we move on to some of the worst missions. Level seven, the Black Morass. Standard issue mirror match level. This is the level where Ogrim Doomhammer betrays Black Hand and seizes the Horde for himself. We are actually playing as Ogrim Doomhammer in this campaign, which is neat. I like the old Blizzard games where the player himself was not just some nameless commander. Another he who controls the bridges level. Oh, it feels so good to not have to deal with human archers. A very standard level overall, though. Get catapults, siege the bridge. Once it is yours, start cat and mousing and blow up the base piece by piece. Blue Orcs look really cool, too. Wouldn't it be awesome to have the color differences like in War 2? Purple humans, yellow orcs. There is a fan-made mod called War 1 Gus and War Gus that translates War 1 and 2 into the Strategus engine. Adding some major quality of life changes, neutral creeps, and mercenaries. So I might check that out at some point. Thanks to the chat for letting me know about that instance. 8. Northshire Abbey This one I thought would be tricky too. A no-build rescue mission but we still have to kill everything, which is silly. We are in Norshire Abbey, a church that has prison cells, brigands, skeletons, and fire element. What kind of church is this? We need to rescue Orc Babe Garona, who murders the King of Azeroth on her own account here, but was later retconned by World of Warcraft, so she was mind-controlled by some. Just let her be an evil green lady. What's bad about being evil in this world? No healers makes this mission tense. It will be a slow process. We need to keep meat-walling hallways and luring enemies. 
They are surprisingly aggressive here, though, so they will attack you more so than you'd think. The biggest challenge here is the human archer scattered about and the fire elemental at the end. Get Garona and bring her to the exit while keeping the weak melee units in the back. Strangely, there are peon prisoners here in this level, but they serve no purpose other than to be liabilities if you rescue them. Ignore them to their fates and kill the remainder of the enemies to win. 9. Northern Elwyn Forest. Doesn't look very foresty to me. This is the beginning of the endgame and of the biggest pain in the ass tactics the enemy loves to use and abuse. Invisibility. See, orcs get unholy armor, which is a pretty annoying spell, but you can handle it. Humans use invisibility constantly. Sneak units into your resource line and bloody do not let up. Unlike modern games, there is no way to detect them. No towers, our sight doesn't work. The only way you can actually see them is getting your attack reticle and moving it over the, the grid that they are on and it turns red. But even though you know where they are, you can't do anything about it. There is no attack round with catapults either. Maybe the poison cloud. I, however, was messing around off-stream and watching some competitive Warcraft 2 matches and realized that they use a lot of buildings as walls. Warcraft, however, can't use buildings for walls because they are restricted to roads and their town borders. Right? I mentioned earlier that this game was inspired by the Dune RTS games, which were made by Westwood Studios, who then made Command & Conquer. Now, Command & Conquer is awesome, but they have a very different base building mechanic to Warcraft. Instead of workers, they build their buildings instantly, but it has to be in the radius of another building. This prevents you from building a guard tower straight into your enemy's base right off the bat. So if you capture an enemy building with an engineer or capture a neutral building, you can build buildings next to it. I said buildings a lot there. Don't worry. You can also build a train towards your enemy base, especially in CNC 1. What I didn't realize is Warcraft 1 has the same mechanic. You can actually build roads as far as you want. Buildings, however, need to be built within two tiles of another building. But what Warcraft also did by accident is when building plots are placed, the building is actually complete, health and mass-wise, meaning you can instant build any building within range. Except for bridges. I don't know if this strat has already been discovered. I like to think I figured it out with my big brain genius. You can build multiple buildings with one PO and canceling a plot gives you most of the resources back. You can start leapfrogging farms down a road to one of the bridges and then completely wall them off. With a full building wall, no invisible guys can come in, right? Right? But that doesn't mean the AI still doesn't try, and they are mega sneaky bastards. So this map gives you a decent amount of time before the humans go full throttle, so get your resources up and start your wall you're going to want to keep some guards ready in this zone next to your gold mine. The invisible guys, while unpredictable when they show up, are predictable where they show up, and it's usually near your gold miners. Now, I am no architect. In case you have forgotten, I have to tell you a secret. Now, to be honest with you, I, I'm kind of retarded. I mess up the first wall and get slain by invisible bastards and scorpions. Second try goes much better. Once both walls are complete, you just need to fortify with spearmen and catapults. Be careful of scorpions, though. The human conjurers are super dicks. Also, with the wall not built, they still have the health and armor of a completed building. So if one takes damage, I can simply cancel, get most of the money back, and replace. This also helps save money when you're leapfrogging your buildings to build a wall in the first place. But literally, the one to two seconds I go from canceling to replacing a building, invisible guys sneaking. It seems that if they can't get to your gold mine, the invisible guys will literally just cherry pick and camp out your wall. And because old Blizzard games had some a sense of balance with time limits, we'll just hang out waiting for you to let them in. Keep a tight lid on things and watch out for enemy catapults. These guys can really fuck up a plan. I like to go for the south base first. Open the door, head down, lure, blast, and destroy. Once the base is down, wall up and leave a small security detail and move to the north base. The enemy two bases are attached, so they can actually still attack you from the south. Once you go across the north bridge, same thing. Open and close behind you. Trust me, they will get in and clear out the rest. Over an hour later, deathless.
10. Center of the human lands. Easy level, and thankfully a good break. Just like the human equivalent, you get so many units to clear out a fairly average base. Take the bridge and start luring. There are some sneaky boys that will go around, but the boat get bombarded. Once the guards are dead, swarm in the base and kill it. Level 11, Old Shire and Moonbrook. This is an easy-ish one, but grindy. We have to destroy Goldshire, the starting position for humans in World of Warcraft. Luckily, there is a choke to your base, fairly close too, so you don't have to worry about daisy training a wall of farms to seal off the enemies. Once you are walled in, tech up and be careful of water elements. Two or three solid catapult shots to take them out. The problem is they have range, so they can actually fire past your walls and shoot your wall guards. The human conjurers start spamming these pricks too, and are the uber unit. This map is a lot smaller than it looks, and on the right side, you can actually see the enemy town from your forest line. Arc a catapult or two here, and you can bombard a few enemy buildings, which not only fucks with them, but also aggros their army to your forest, not your wall. Roll them up and keep bombing the town. This base is basically disabled for now. They will keep sending any men they train to your artillery line, including their peasants, so you will just strangle them of all their money. This is a level we especially see how patient enemy Invisicunts are. It's like the Predator move, where he's just waiting outside my walls to strike. When you are ready, just send a Speed Raider up and lure the enemy guards. When you are comfortable, send your Spearman and Artie up and blow up the rest of the town. Once it all goes down, hit that precious red screen and check out your score. Level 12, Stormwind Keep. Okay, this is the Earth. You might be saying, damn, that is a nice Earth. Wrong? Okay, listen, this mission is the finale for the Orcs, and it is pure, unmitigated pain and torture. The enemy is bananas here. Three bases like Blackrock Spire, but you cannot make your Uber unit, the Demon. Unlike the human mission, there are two entrances to your bases via bridges, which are somewhat easy to wall, and your gold mines are actually super reasonable here. The Invisitwats are in full force this mission, like this guy, who I think is being controlled by an actual human. I save right before he reveals himself, and he appears and kills a peon, the weakest peon. So I reload, and he kills us warlock. And then... Fuck. Fuck. Shit. Son of a... Ass. Piece of... Fuck. Come on, bro. What? Holy fuck. Whoa. What? Hey. Stop it. Yo. Mother. Fuck you. Finally. Managed to have a load where he went for this warlock and died. Man, he was on point. Striking the weak units. He was like two-shotting my warlock. The rest of this mission is a massive grind, and humans spam element, visit dudes, and even a few firestorms. They end up massing spellcasters since I am just turtling, so eventually the waves, no pun intended, of elementals and a steady stream of enemy knights and archers give no reprieve. You can easily beat this mission in like a half an hour with demons, or demons as they're spelt, but not me, because I am an idiot. I have to beat this fairly without free kill everything units. The north wall can be somewhat left alone. Just park some catapults and some spears and occasionally check for damaged farms. I focus on the south entrance here. There's an enemy town fairly close and you can stop bombarding and luring. I have to make sure Carl the foreman closes the wall after I leave. The JIT and Visit dudes are almost constantly in the map and are just waiting to pull the trigger. Once I clear out this town, I discover that I can actually hit Stormwind Keep from this island on this tiny spot. Doing so pisses off the enemy real bad and salt the bridge. The biggest problem here are enemy catapults. They seem to be giga chads and know where to shoot and where to ignore your key units. I use unholy armor here to protect my catapults from their fire, but it's sometimes a hopeless endeavor. During this grind, I use one of the cheat codes, Crushing Defeat, to get to an end screen in order to see if I have a unit's lost. But one of my viewers told me that if you press F6 to F8, however, it brings up units lost, mission objectives, and other helpful info. What the fuck? I have played this game all my life, and 
never knew about this. I love streaming for this reason. Somebody out there knows what you do not. This makes keeping track of things way easier on my second playthrough. I am summarizing a lot here. This mission has no breaks. You are constantly attacked, bombarded, close called, and blasted. I managed to blow up Stormwind. And it aggroes the rest of the units on the map, including five fucking catapults that attack my north wall. They seem to randomly hit targets too, so the unholy armor only works sometimes. It seems to be RNG. Luckily, you can cast it as much as you want. It only halves your health, so when you have no health, it doesn't have anything, and it just armors you up. Once the middle town goes down, you are not out of the fire here. Crawl, lure, bomb, and finally, finally I beat... What? Carl. Carl, you shit. This was outrageous. One death in three hours. And because I'm not very good at time management, I saved too much, and he seems to have died over two hours ago. This answers the question. Yes, you can beat the game deathless. But I didn't. I took a couple days to contemplate life choices and think about the meaning of life and what I've decided to do, but I had to try again. Prove to the wonderful people out there that I do indeed have a purpose in life. Carl will be saved. So, a few days later, I loaded up and tried again. Three hours later, we are back. Confirmed deathless, although a lot of close calls, and here we go. I think I have time to finally unleash the safety strat. I summon four diamonds to clean up the rest of the enemy before they expire and do their job well. Oh my god. God, these guys are so strong. It feels nice to be able to... Come on, only seconds left, you bastards. All right. Go red, go red, go red, go red. What? You... Looks like this farmer, Farmer Steve, is sweating, watching the horde wash over his city, only to spare his house. Load up and do it again. Using my bridge guards to help, and finally, finally, I did it. I finally beat Warcraft, Orcs, and Humans, Deathless. I am never going to do this run again. This was rough. I might try some like Footman only or Grunt only challenges, or maybe I'll showcase that War 1 Gus mod that I spoke of earlier. It looks like there's some really cool shit there. I will never do Deathless again. Those last few missions, especially for Orcs, are bullshit. Anyways. Thanks for watching and subscribing. I even got my first donation ever during this stream. I stress, you are not obligated to donate or subscribe, but I will welcome them. I'm not asking for them. I'm not going to smash a pie in my face for 500 bits or whatever. I'm going to do what I've been doing. Chilling with some cool people, playing games. See you on the next one.